So for part two of this uh, Hawaii science vacation, I get to the top of Mauna Kea. Thanks in part to the help of the nice people at the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope, who we will find out a whole lot more about in coming episodes. But for now, we're just going to the top of the mountain. Okay, so I am on the road out of Hilo with uh, Callie from the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope, and I'm looking out the passenger side window, and that is Mauna Kea there. It looks a bit cloudy, but we are reliably informed that we will be able to get up to the top, even if we can't actually see stars from up there. There is a public visitor centre six miles off the main road, but it's only part of the way up the mountain. Yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely looking a whole lot cloudier than I would hope. I mean, this is just basically the truth that, you know, if you're on top of a mountain, then uh, you're going to get bad weather because mountains tend to stick up into clouds. And we are definitely driving up into clouds. Okay, so right now I'm standing on the balcony of Hale Pohaku, which means the House of Stone. This here is about 9,300 feet up the side of Mauna Kea, and it's kind of like a, a hotel for astronomers to basically stay here while they're working on the telescopes. There's, you know, a cafe, they get their meals, there's places for them to stay because, you know, you want to get acclimatized. When you're coming up the mountain, it's a good idea to stop at the visitor center for about an hour or so just to make sure that you're not getting super lightheaded and starting to have any trouble. But uh, yeah, visibility is pretty rubbish. But, uh, you know, we are going to be able to get up to the top of the mountain and see some uh, telescopes up there, which is great. So I am looking forward to that. The centre is very international, and yet yeah, apparently they have to truck up all the water, so it's very expensive because the top of the mountain is, of course, a highly sensitive and protected area. But anyway, after a sit-down, cup of coffee, we were ready, we were acclimatised, and we got going. Here we go, pavement ends, 4x4 four four only. So it's about a 30 minute drive, 25 minute drive, of, of 4 and a half miles of unpaved rocky road and then another 4 miles of paved road. And so I guess they didn't pave this portion of the road for money and kind of a deterrent to keep, I think, a lot of people keep casuals. <laughs> So one thing that actually caught me by surprise was that early on we were inside clouds and it was looking pretty dismal. There was a lot of rain, a lot of uh, drizzle at this altitude. But as we got higher up, we actually rose above the clouds that were sitting in the valley between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. And we could start looking down on cloud cover. Now we certainly weren't above all of the clouds, but we're, we were above enough of the clouds that we could look up and see blue sky and look down and see cloud. It was kind of nice because I hadn't really seen much in the way of blue skies on my trip up until this point. Certainly the weather had been nice and warm, I'd done a lot of swimming, but I hadn't seen much in the way of actual blue skies. Also, despite everyone having off-road capable 4x4s, there were very strict rules on staying on the road because it is an ecologically and culturally sensitive area. So I guess Wow, so we're basically, we got above the clouds, right, in one direction. We got up to the road, so it got to a nice road because you don't want to kick up dust with the telescopes. But now we're heading into, like, the cloud at the very top, a cap cloud. Yeah. Yeah, so basically the moisture gets sucked up the side of the mountain and it goes towards the peak and then it collects there. Cools off and condenses. It, yep, exactly where all the telescopes are. Unfortunately. So while we've got some nice weather here, we're about to head into the fog, which is unfortunately stopping the telescopes from working. Aha, this is the first telescope I've seen. This is part of the VLBA, the Very Long Baseline Antenna. I think that's a 25 meter dish and it is actually slewing downwards. 
So here we are. This is uh, this is actually one part of the VLBA right there. Look at that. That is stunning. 25 meters. In case you're wondering, yes I was using my iPhone, but there are plenty of signs to remind you to put it into airplane mode. Uh, apparently we have reached the top and there are telescopes hiding out there somewhere. Or we still have to reach the top, we can see the telescopes from here. Uh, oh yes, here we go. We have the CFHT and IRTF and then we have JCMT in that direction. But we are going this way first. To the top. To the top. There's still little remnants of snow on Hawaii in the spring. Snow still in the mountain top. You can actually see more of it down there. And I, I've heard that people take this down to the bottom and build snowmen for, you know, giggles, I guess. On the beach, in the backyard, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Oh my god, it looms large out of the fog. That is the UK infrared telescope, UKIRT, right? Yep. yep. Fantastic old. Still working. Warning to keep back from falling ice. What is that like? Is, oh, is that a porta potty next to that? It is, yeah. We get plenty of tourists. Don't. Here. <laughs> this is the University of Hawaii Aviation Telescope. Uh, this is going to be with a lot of the. University of Hawaii PhD students use and faculty. Wow. So how, so no wait, that's an 80 inch you say? 88. 88, okay. So actually, none of the telescopes on this summit ridge here um, are actually manned at the summit anymore. All of these are remotely operated. Oh wow, we can really hear the wind. We Even from the interior of the car, but that is, that's Gemini. Uh, it's obviously there is a counterpart elsewhere in the world that's possibly less fogged in. Yeah, down in Chile. Down in Chile. Wow. But that wind is really whipping up now. Yeah, it's, it's so pretty high up here. <laughs> it's the most picturesque dome on the mountain. So it would it's be. Just proportioned correctly. I see. So this is the most picturesque. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> it just it looks. Looks like a piece of a Star Destroyer, actually. That's what it is. I just think Gemini with the vent gates and stuff when it opens. Oh, it's yeah. Absolutely That's the coolest. That is but this so one is somehow so classic. Yeah. Uh, you can barely see it, but the wind is just whipping the clouds over the peak. It feels like, I don't know, the long dark. What's that? Yeah, you can open your window if you want. Oh god, that's that's freezing. There we go. It's really running through the wind here. So this is over to the next ridge, right? And this is where we have the camp. Oh. Okay, that's the IRTF up there. And the other one on this peak is the big one. Twin WM Keck Observatories well, and, uh, and Subaru Observatory, the yeah. National Observatory of Japan on this bridge. This is just near the reality of being on a mountaintop. Wow, they still have the old NASA worm logo. It's a pretty old school. Operated by the University of Hawaii. Yeah, why haven't they updated the logo? Surely the NASA style guy kicks in at some point. They're retro. It's you very see, retro. See their, um, lounge in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's try and get out at the mountain top. Oh, it's not so bad actually. Yeah, it, it's actually nice. It's the spring in Hawaii. <laughs> and we're just taking a quick walk around here. This, yeah, this is the keg. Top keg. There it is. There, that's one telescope. There's the other one. And just in case you don't, just in case you doubt me. WM Keck Observatory. Yeah, I'm a little scruffy in case you hadn't noticed. The winds elsewhere in the mountain are um, 50, 60 miles an hour, but apparently we're sitting in the shelter here, so we're okay. Okay, on to more telescopes. And this is the Subaru Telescope, the flagship of the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. 
not seeing very much right now. Okay, so out there somewhere is the site of the 30 meter telescope. And I say site because the construction was actually halted uh, because of some concerns over respect for native culture. The, uh, the project has been temporarily stopped. Uh, we'll get a decision, I believe, later. Um, you know, the, there's been actual protests. Uh, yeah, I mean, they just, I think, partly it's to respect the top of Mauna Kea, which is basically where the gods live in the Hawaiian uh, spirituality. And I can totally get behind that. Obviously, I also want to get behind astronomy and... What are these here? These are the Smithsonian 7mm array. Ah, yes. This is a similar range, I guess. Yep, to the Mason Antique. So they're, they're, in, they're in a very compact position right now, so they're not doing their very high-resolution interferometry, but, but those, those antennas can be moved to different pads across the land there. And depending on the instrumentation, they can do... Uh, yeah, so for about, almost, yeah. I suppose faster mapping or higher resolution is probably Right. There's the big antenna mover. Ooh. Picks them up and drives them around. Oh, so those, they actually pick them up and move them with yeah. that beastie to wherever they need to be. Or into the hangar here for or, repair. That is cool. I had not realized that. That is really special. And the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope. Hey, the JCMT. That is the, the biggest of the mirrors on the dome, on the, the top, on the summit. Yes. I mean, you could say that radar dish, but that's not really a mirror, is it? <laughs> the it's... largest single submillimeter. Yes, and submillimeter is special, as we've said, in many ways. This has been going since like the 80s, I guess? Yep, 87 yep. is when it was 87. Working. 